So I go to uh, Space Force, uh, spaceforce.mil was, was one of my options uh, for looking for the Space Force jobs. And I'm like, oh, um, 18, 19, 20 years old. I'm interested in joining space. I might be a little bit older. First question is, do I need a college degree? And the next question is, do I, am I going to go to Space Force boot camp? Great question, uh, Samson. So first of all, you do not need a college de uh, degree. But let me quickly follow that up by saying uh, there's a large um, proportion of our enlisted corps that have competitive college degrees. Uh, we have one of the, one of the most uh, qualified and um, highly capable forces in, in the world because of our enlisted corps. And that's acro uh, across the entire department of uh, the Air Force. But as far as space basic boot camp or a basic training or what we call basic military training, um, in a recent interview, our uh, chief master sergeant of the Space Force, Chief Toberman, he said that uh, he does not anticipate that the Space Force will have its own basic training. Some historical background though, the first enlisted guardians graduated basic military training in December of 2020. So, so just about a year after we were created. And the way that it was organized then is that these guardians were interspersed throughout Air Force, throughout Air Force flights during their time at basic training. For the training piece, so when we talk about space basic training, the training curriculum there at basic military training, initially there were nine hours of basic military training instruction that were, that were special tailored to Space Force re, uh, recruits. And the, the possibility is left open that there could be incremental changes going forward to increase or to decrease the amount of hours that have been uh, tailor-made for Space Force recruits. And so, in my opinion, having this, uh, this way ahead, and oh, by, by the way, the future is going to be Space Force flights at BMT. So there will be Space Force specific flights. Of, BMT uh, for everyone, recruits. basic military training. Keep going. Absolutely, Sorry. thank you. No, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, acronym bingo. Um, yeah. Acronym being bingo all the time. Um, it, it, it's a critical piece, and here's why. Uh, because it's been said that the enlisted corps are the ones who truly carry a services culture and traditions. And so by creating a cohort as early in an enlisted person's career as day one, that will be a key factor in developing our culture and traditions as our, as our service continues to grow. Something that was really unifying in an experience for Marines of my era, so I'm the, you know, the post-9-11 era, um, something really unifying for us was the crucible, which was this unifying event that occurred at the end of our basic training. Um, if you don't have one built yet, I think you should think of, uh, think of one that we could maybe build for, for the space force guardians. Cause it, it's a unifying experience and it does instill that, you know, that value, that cultural transition to folks who are, who are now part of, you know, the club. And what I love, George, what I love about the military services is that each service has different key responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so the crucible for the Marines, it validates a Marine's ability to carry out some of those key responsibilities that are truly hard, that are truly tough, and that will be required of them during their service as a Marine. And so for, for the Space Force, we have a different set of key responsibilities. And combat operations generally look a little di uh, different for space as compared to Marines or compared to the Army or to the Navy or to, to the Coast Guard. And I think that um, something like a crucible could be valuable, but it would definitely look different because the preponderance of what we do is different than any of our joint counterparts. So if I was to create a crucible for space, it might look more like the Kobayashi uh, Maru than anything else. Uh, so in my opinion, a service, um, so in, in my opinion, service specific doctrine, basic training, technical training, recruiting from all walks of civilian life and inter-service transfers will be what fuel the creation of our culture and our traditions. I'm, I'm, I'm writing notes here because um, not that we don't love, uh, not that we don't love Star Trek, but I was thinking more Halo, Fall of Reach, um, orbital shock drop troopers. It's a whole different, because uh, it's interesting. We have a whole generation of, of uh, potential recruits who've grown up with these sci-fi notions. And so it's part of it when you say uh, combat operations in space, it's not, what, it's not what we used to do. It's what does that look like in the future? And so that's super important to think about and conceptualize, even just to wrap our heads around that. 
But since we are here at your destination for the business of space, the space economy, we're talking about recruiting into Space Force, I have the number one question that I pulled myself for to ask, does Space Force have its own special MREs meals ready to eat? That is a, that is a great question and one that I have never received before. So I, I, I appreciate that. Um, so uh, short, the short answer is that we do not have special MREs. Um, and so just some background is that, so space operators, I'll say don't usually deploy. Uh, when we do deploy, we receive the same support and meals as all of the other services, including the MREs. So in actuality, most Space Force operations happen right here in the, in the United States. There is a different way of thinking about and understanding war apart from any other era in human history. Our battles, as you were mentioning, they're, they're, they're just different. They are not only fought in just the land, the air, or the sea, but for us, our battle space spans all domains to include land, air, sea, space, and cyberspace. It includes our assets in the, in the space domain, as well as the networks that uh, connect us. So most of our folks are located on Space Force or Air Force bases in the US and have access to world-class dining facilities, gymnasiums, and support facilities to conduct our uh, space operations. I love it, I love it. Um, it I'm not gonna say it's like a, um, a retreat, but, but it does sound like it has some of its own perks 